when you're 57, stuff starts to add up and you know you just realize that you're not who you used to be. And I was really starting to notice just deterioration, physical and, and to a degree mental deterioration, you know, of age. Uh, you know, the doctors, their solution is take another pill. You know, here's a pill for that, here's a pill for that. It didn't seem like the right solution. I, I realized that, you know, I wasn't eating well, I wasn't working out, I wasn't doing the right kind of stuff. And, but I didn't know what the solution was, so I started looking for the solution. I'm an investment manager, you know, I, I basically pick stocks. You know, I, but I was traveling all the time, I was eating crummy food, I was, you know, not sleeping well, and I was doing zero exercise. That combination, you know, that'll, that'll add up over a bunch of years. I mean, I was functioning, it's just, it's like, um, how do you describe it? It's, it's like, it's just like everything was dialed back. You know, I mean, I know what functioning at 100% is like, and I was functioning at like 60. And there were touch points, right? There's you go skiing, and you ski down a trail that you've skied for 25 years, and it used to be a piece of cake, and this time you do it, and you're totally out of breath, your legs hurt, and you, you know, you're thinking, how quickly can I get off this hill? <laughs> You start thinking to yourself, well, you know, this is 57, what's 60 going to look like? What's 65 going to look like? What's 70 going to look like? What's 80 going to look like, right? And, and it's very easy to get kind of down. I mean, it's very easy, it's, you know, the physical translates into the mental a little bit, right? I mean, you know, um, you start getting depressed. It was, it was a place I didn't want to go. If you check the statistics, you know, most men my age are noticing serious health issues and you know, I've had a lot of friends who've had a lot of issues that are even more serious than mine. I mean, there's a reason why the pharmaceutical makers in America are making billions of dollars. I mean, there's a, you know, there's a reason. I had never been well coached um, in sports in my entire life. I had high school coaches, right, and they yelled at me, you know, Larry, run faster, Larry, swim harder, Larry, you know. They weren't on my side trying to make me a better athlete. The role and the responsibility of a coach is to get, build that relationship, because what we have at our fingertips is the most powerful fitness repertoire that's ever been created for delivering results. All we have to do is get our members and our athletes to believe in us and trust us. If we can do that, we give them the prescription of constantly very functional movements at high intensity, and the results take care of themselves. What I find amazing about CrossFit is the way that the coaches are on your side, working with you to help you become a better version of you. You know, that's really a unique characteristic that you really don't get, you know, anywhere else. The biggest thing that we need to do as coaches is simply get people to buy into what we're doing. And obviously we've done that really well with Larry. He believes in what we're doing. He believes in us as people. And it's because I, I think that we just show him that we have his best interests you know, above most other things. From the minute I walked into the place, I just felt like, wow, you know, this, I, I, and I told him, I said, I want, I'm, I'm terribly out of shape. I want to get into good shape, you know. Is that something you can help me do? And they said, absolutely. You know, there's, we can help you do that. We know how to do that. It'll work, we guarantee it. But there's one thing you gotta do, you gotta show up. And they said, can you do that? And I said, yeah, I can show up. He's a workhorse. He loves workouts where it's just like row, run, like but he's also incredibly competitive. Um, he's got Jerry, uh, a couple of the other guys that he competes with regularly. We, we, we spur each other on. Uh, we compete maybe a little bit, but, but mostly we just uh, motivate each other. And uh, Larry's extremely motivated, more so than me. It's, it's just a question of trying to keep up with him, really. The first time I did 100 burpees for time, I think it was like 13 or 14 minutes, right? I mean, I did it last summer in eight minutes and 10 seconds. Yeah, but you know, ironically, I want to be able to do it in six or seven, right? Because <laughs> that's what Jerry could do it in. <laughs> so over the two years I've known him, he's PR'd his mile multiple times. He's gotten pull-ups for the first time. He can string toes to bar together. Uh, he went from an athlete who knew about these movements to an athlete who is now crushing these movements. 
I think guys, when they turn 50, if they don't have some kind of a physical exercise routine, they really should try to find one. Because if they're like me, they're gonna find that the deterioration that takes place starts to become problematic. And that that deterioration can be really pushed back as a result of you know, just a, a commitment to an hour a day of, of moving, moving your body. It's about prolonging life. It's about pushing away the nursing home. It's about reducing or trying to eliminate chronic disease. It's about functionality. It's about enjoying your life longer. It's about kicking ass into your 90s, not being decrepit in your 60s. I would say that most of our masters, like the biggest thing that we're always working on is movement and mobility. And that's, but those are the things that are really moving the needle in the long run. Larry sometimes gets discouraged. He'll crush a workout, but he thinks he could have gone faster. And I tell him, Larry, imagine if we walked into the country club in Wellesley and looked at other guys your age. You would destroy them. You would be way fitter than they are on all accounts. Look, it's not easy. It's humbling and it's a little bit intimidating, you know, for many guys, particularly guys my age, to walk into a CrossFit box and you're gonna think to yourself, if you're like me anyway, you're gonna think to yourself, do I really belong here? I think in the right box with good coaches, you're gonna, you're gonna feel like, yeah, you do belong here. It's about being the best version of yourself. It's not really about being the best. As long as you're trying, you belong. There might not be a more humble human being on the planet, but he's hungry. And those two are really powerful combination. If you're willing to learn humble, you combine that with somebody that's hungry, looking to constantly get better in every aspect. You layer that in with somebody that has a positive mindset and looks at the opportunities, not the obstacles in front of them. You have a humble, hungry, happy person. And Larry's that epitome of that for us. You know, I play squash, I, uh, I ski. You know, I jog, I run, I swim. Those things are all, they all feel easier again. There's that. It's pretty funny. My doctor, you know, I went in to have to see him, I don't see him very often, I see him once a year for the annual checkup, right? And he's like, what the hell are you doing? You know? <laughs> I'm sure there are other ways to get this fit, but I'm not aware of them. I mean, when I started, I couldn't jump rope, really. You know, I mean, I, I still am having trouble with double unders, but, uh, you know, I can do 200 unbroken singles. I couldn't do that when I started, so. Probably the just common accepted narrative now that's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm older, so I'm just gonna enjoy my retirement. I'm gonna do arts and crafts, and maybe like the most intense thing I do is a round of golf, and like that's super socially acceptable. Honestly, as a CrossFit athlete, I think I'm very, very mediocre. I really do, um, but has CrossFit made an unbelievable, meaningful impact on the quality of Larry's life? Absolutely. I mean, like move the dial just amazingly. As we've been working together, trying to motivate him in ways that um, are consistent with his competitive goals. So we can prepare him for whatever it is that he wants to do, whether that's compete in the open, be awesome on the ski slope with his grandkids, or anything in between. Hopefully people can see Larry and be like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Um, but that's not enough by itself. People have to take some ownership. And I really think the ownership starts with people realizing that people like Larry are not doing this to look better. And so even though dad isn't you know, young anymore, you know, um, he's still willing to push and to, you know, to, to, give it, to give his best effort. People, when they get older, either go to the nursing home because they lose functionality or do they go to the hospital or get sick because of what they do in the kitchen. We're trying to do those two things and we have this really nice beautiful side effect which is you look better as well. You know I want to be fit, healthy, strong as much as I possibly can for as long as I possibly can and that that will make me a better father, a better husband, better citizen, better investor, better whatever. Um, and I'll just be happier doing it and you know, I just feel better. You know, you just, it, it's just part of who I am and I know that if I do it, I'll feel good. I think I heard it from Ben and I heard it from a few others and it's kind of a pretty well-known mantra around the CrossFit world which is just keep walking through the door.